This is a video that I am making to help my students uh, practice dealing with well data during their ASPOG exam as they're studying for that test. Uh, this is an unofficial video. I'm not affiliated or benefiting from um, the ASPOG in any way. It's just a video to help my students. So let's say that you get a question that has three data points on a map. Your brain should immediately go to three-point problem, whether it's asking you to deal with the gradient in an aquifer or if it's asking you about um, what the attitude of a bed would be um, that you hit in these three wells. So we're going to go over, and I might have a, a two-part video for this, what you would do in this situation if you're asked for a gradient and then what you would do if you're asked um, to essentially do a three-point problem. So let's start with that gradient first. I'm going to do all this in blue because it's associated with water. And then when we hit this next problem, we'll do that in red. Okay, so this asked, uh, what is the gradient um, of this aquifer if it's going to hit at 2,000 or 200 feet below ground at C, 5 feet below ground at B, and 50 feet below ground at A? By gradient, what this means is slope expressed as a decimal. So rise over run. Okay, so here at C, we're 200 feet below ground. So I'm going to draw a little water symbol so I remember what I'm doing. And I hit that at 5,800 feet. For B, we are going to hit that same aquifer at 5 feet below ground, so that's 3995 feet. And for A, we're going to hit it at 50 feet below ground, which is 4950. So all I've done is subtract those depths from my surface elevation. Okay, so now you have to think about if I could dig down below ground, and these are the elevations of that aquifer, what direction is water going to flow? So this is the highest elevation associated, even though it's below ground, it's the highest elevation associated with the aquifer. This one is the lowest, and this one is also lower than this one. Okay, so if I had to round, this one kind of rounds to 6,000, this one kind of rounds to 4,000, and this one kind of rounds to 5,000. So in a way, it's mimicking the water or the surface. Now, if I put a droplet of water here and we're imagining how it's going to roll, it is going to roll downhill within that aquifer system, but it's not going to roll straight toward B. And the reason for that is that this is also downhill from this. This just is more downhill. So you have to think that it's going to land somewhere in between these two values. That's where my water is going to roll. Okay, so the way to figure this out, and let's say that you had um, you had multiple choices at this point, and you kind of knew that that was going to be the direction it was going to roll in. If your four choices are northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest, if you know, oh, well, this is the direction that's kind of in between these two, well, now you know what your answer is. You didn't have to do any math on that. But let's say that you have two choices to the northeast and you're trying to, to decide between the two. Or your gradient um, is looking for the amount and not the direction. So what you would do then is say that this is my intermediate value. My intermediate value also kind of exists between these two points. I'm going to essentially do a three-point problem to get the gradient here um, and the direction of water flow. So let's do that. Where did I put? Where did I put my ruler? Oh, here, I use this. All right, so I'm going to draw a line between my maximum elevation in the aquifer and my minimum elevation. So that's B to C. Now the way to think about this is that if I go from B to C, or C to B, here's C, here's B, there's some vertical distance between the two, 
which would be 5,800 minus 3,995, which is 1,805 feet. And there's also some horizontal distance between the two. Somewhere along this line, this point uh, at A, that 4950, is going to plot. But we don't know where that is yet. And this is the actual slope of the aquifer between those two points. OK, so this point at C was 5800. And we know that A is at 5950, or sorry, 4950. So I am going to subtract uh, C minus A, which is uh, 5800 minus 4950, five, which is 855, five, 855. So I can imagine coming down 855, putting a point, and that is where A would land. Just to figure out how far down that would go, if you take 855 and you divide it by 1805, you're going to get around 47%. OK, so about halfway. So let's go about halfway between uh, C and B and put a point. Because over here, that would also correspond to about halfway along that line. And I'm going to make a line connecting A and this point. Okay. In a way, this is a line of strike. Because at this point, my elevation is also 4950. I'm right in between those two points. Maybe a little bit closer to C because it's 47% versus 53%, but I'm still closer to C. I'm still about halfway too. All right, that's my strike. So 90 degrees to strike means that is my dip direction or my gradient direction. But now I need to figure out the amount. When it asks for gradient, it's looking for slope expressed as a decimal. So I'm going to draw a line parallel to this one going through another known elevation. This line is also essentially a strike line, but where the elevation is 3995. Okay. So there is some triangle to be made in here to help us understand gradient, where the vertical distance between the two is 4950 minus 3995. Okay. This happens to be 955. And a horizontal distance that water would also traverse through the aquifer in that direction. Well, this is where you're going to use your map scale. So take your ruler, mark how the distance is between this line and this line. Come down, that's 2,000 feet. And so my gradient is going to be rise over run. 955 five, divided by a run of 2,000. So my gradient ends up being 4, 0.477. And if it asks you for a direction, it's to the northeast. All right, in part two of this video, we're going to talk about finding the strike and dip of a limestone unit that you also would hit in these three wells. Thanks.